the Navancha chart or the D9 chart, we will see how it is made. Let's take any example chart where we have degrees also. You want me to give you an example chart? Yes, uh, example chart with degrees. Yeah, one minute. One minute. You tell me the date of the chart. December 1st, uh, 1985. Time? 1755. Place? Uh, Hill, Belgium. And Hill is spelled G double E L. Belgium, yes. So tell me the planets. First of all, tell me the Lagna. The Lagna is, is uh, Gemini. Gemini. What is the degree in the Lagna? Eight, eight degrees, one minute. Planets? Sign and degree. So tell me what about Mercury? Uh, Scorpio, nine degrees, 18 minutes. Scorpio, nine degrees, 18 minutes. 18 minutes. And uh, Mercury is retrograde. That is, okay, that is okay. Yeah. Tell me about Moon. Uh, moon, second house. No, it's uh, not cancer, second house. Cancer. In cancer sign. Cancer sign, two degrees, nine minutes. Two degrees, nine minutes. Done. In also in Scorpio, um, 15 degrees, 48 minutes. 15 degrees? Yes. And 48 minutes? Yes. Uh, Mars is 28 degrees. Uh, Mars is 28 degrees. 15 minutes. That's no. okay. No. So Jupiter uh, in Capricorn, 18 degrees, 48 minutes. Jupiter in Capricorn? Yes. Venus? In Scorpio? Scorpio. Four degrees, three minutes. Saturn? Um, also Scorpio. A very heavy Scorpio sign. Yeah, four planets, four planets there. Eight, eight degrees, six minutes. And then Rahu and Ketu at... So okay, Rahu, Rahu. Rahu in Aries, 13 degrees, 46 years. So let's get to the rule. That what is the rule of uh -huh. making an one shot chart? So you need to do... Every sign has 30 degrees. Every zodiac sign is. We do nine divisions. When we do nine divisions, one division comes to three degree 20 minutes. Yes. When you divide it by nine, right. and because one degree is equal to 60 minutes, yes, of course. Yeah. So three of these becomes 10 degrees. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So when I say what when I say Navanch, that means ninth division. Or when we do nine divisions, the one part or one namanch is of three degree twenty minutes. Right. The second namanch is till this is till. Yeah. Till, so till three degree twenty minutes. Zero 40. two. It is zero two three degree twenty minutes. Uh, and second namanch is so from three degree twenty minutes to six degree forty minutes. Right. Third namanch is ten degrees. Six degree forty minutes to ten degree. So, yeah, yeah. Fourth. Namanch is till 13 degree 20 minutes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So one nakshatra has four namanchas. So yeah. they are called padas also. So one pad is also of three degree 20 minutes. Right. Mm -hmm. And one sign has nine padas. Yes. So fifth is till 16 degree 40 minutes. 40 minutes. Mm -hmm. Then 20 degrees till 23 degrees 20 minutes. 8th Navanch is till 26 degree 40 minutes. 9th Navanch is from 26 degree 40 minutes 1 second till 30 degrees. That is correct? Yes. And there is no confusion and we are okay with it? No, no confusion. So now the rule says that we know about the Char Rashis or the movable signs. Right. And we know about the signs of the same elements. Uh -huh. Okay. So yes. in, in the fire, the signs of the fire elements, if I write uh -huh. so three corners. So like fire are fire signs are one, five, and nine. Then are these signs two, six, and ten? Uh -huh. Then airy three, seven, eleven, then water four, eight, and twelve. Uh -huh. Okay. Yes. So they have similar element, or they the you can kind of categorize these signs in uh, four categories. So these are these can be categorized. Categorized. So these these are different different corners. So now you have to pick the movable signs in each category. Uh -huh. This is a movable sign. This is a movable sign. 
this is a movable sign and this is a movable sign so i don't know if you remember when we in the earlier classes we did when we were doing qualities of the signs i hope you remember that we we studied this that what signs are what yes um yeah friendships oh no yeah 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 fire 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 no correct no among the fire signs which is the movable sign aries aries correct among the earthy signs which one is the movable sign uh, uh, yeah yeah typical right. i hope there's no stress in remembering this among the airy signs um uh, so um libra 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 is the movable sign among the watery signs cancer is the movable sign so in the sequence or 14710 the kendra house of the kalpurush are right. char houses or movable houses okay so no problem in remembering this uh, no first and foremost when we make any chart we have to we have to place the ascendant unless there is ascendant we cannot make a chart right right so gemini lagna is gemini 8 degrees 1 minute here on the top left yeah, of course it is falling in which namancha namancha um, the third it is falling in the third namancha right yeah yeah Yeah. Now the rule says that where with in whichever sign it is placed in uh -huh. whichever sign you are talking about, yes. you have to pick this movable sign in that category. Like Gemini is Airy. Gemini is Airy sign. Yes. And among Airy signs, the three Airy signs, which one is the movable sign? Libra is the movable uh -huh. sign. Yeah. So we will start counting from Libra when we count. Three from Libra, so one is Libra itself. This is in the third namanch. It is under ten yeah. degrees, between six forty and ten degrees. Yeah. So we will start counting from Libra, Libra, Scorpio, and then yeah. Sagittarius. Yeah. So you check in the software if Sagittarius is the lagna. Yeah, that's correct. So now the second or the or or, or let's see where the Mercury goes. So Mercury is in Scorpio. Yeah, Scorpio, nine degree eighteen minutes. Yeah, it falls in this watery sign. Yes, category. among the watery sign categories, fourth sign is the movable sign. Right, right. So we yeah. will pick the movable sign or the cardinal sign, and it is again in the third namancha under yes. two degrees. Yeah. So where does it go? We'll start counting three from the fourth. So four. Five and six. Yeah. So, so to work. When we yeah. once first we make the complete chart. Yeah. Then we know that we have to count three, starting mm. from the fourth sign. Yeah. Which is one, two, and three. So Mercury goes here. Yeah. Is the person intelligent? Uh, I don't know her enough, but I, I. Yeah, she makes an intelligent impression on me, but I don't know well enough. Okay. Uh, then the second planet is Moon. Moon is placed in Cancer. Yeah. What is the degree? Two degree nine minutes, yeah. falling in the first namancha itself. Yeah. Yeah. When we say Cancer among the watery group, uh -huh. four, eight, and twelve, Cancer itself. which is yeah. the movable sign we will start yeah. counting from cancer yeah the planet will go where here uh, to leo ah uh, in yes second same yeah. to count one only no no oh, right right one so it is yeah. staying the same sign right no yeah. third is sun yes uh, in the scorpio sign which is this four. water category only so we will start counting from four F from the fourth sign we will start counting from the fourth sign It is falling in which namancha? It is falling in the fifth namancha. Yeah. Correct. So if because it is falling in the fifth namancha, we will start counting from four, which is the movable sign in the water uh, water category. Is that the water I element? Thought, yeah, but I thought it would fall in the in the in the fourth namancha. Why? Fifteen degree forty eight minutes in the fifth namancha is 
fifth one chase till six. Right, yeah, yeah, of course. It's, it's still yeah, not false, no, 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 yeah. You're I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah, uh, sorry. So so it is falling in the fifth Navancha, counting yeah. from four fifth. One, two, three, four, five. So sun comes here. Yeah. In the Scorpio sign. Yeah. yeah. So now you see while you're making the chart, you know that the planets, these planets have strength. This becomes Vargottama, going to the same Namancha. Uh -huh. See? Yeah. It's going yeah. to the yeah. same Namancha. The planet right. becomes yeah. strong. Right. Yeah. This goes to the same Namancha. The planet becomes strong. Right. They will surely deliver the results uh -huh. Uh -huh. of the sign they are placed in. And uh, it is a good thing to have. The Mercury, the Lagan Lord, improves when it goes to the Navancha. It is exalted in the Navancha. So it kind of improves. So it was in uh, with sign. Uh, in it, it was in the Scorpio sign. Right. So it was in the Scorpio sign. So it was not that, it was not doing that great because it was kind of a uh, in the enemy's sign. For mm. Mars and the element is also watery there. So it is not enjoying their uh, Mercury. But when you know that any planet that improves in Navancha, mm. the quality of the planet improves. Yeah. The result mm. of the, that planet improves. Mm. Mm. So that means this is also getting better. These two are becoming Vargottama. Now when we take Mars, Mars is in the last Navansha right. or the ninth Navansha right. in the Gemini sign. So for Gemini sign, we start counting from the seventh sign. Yeah. So seventh is here and ninth from seventh is the third house, uh, is the third sign. Yeah. So Mars comes here. Jupiter is in Capricorn, 18 degree, 48 minutes. That means it is in the 6th Navansha, correct? Mm, yes. We'll start counting from where? From 10th itself? Mm. In the Ardhi sign category? 10th mm. is the cardinal or, or the movable sign. Yeah. We, we, are, we are taking the movable signs as, as a principle only. Only yeah. taking it as a rule. Yeah. Nothing else. So, there are multiple ways. There are, there are a couple of more ways to make the mancha chart. But I find this one simpler. Okay. And I use this. Okay. There's a couple of more ways of making a mancha chart. But I find this comparatively similar. So, I am able to calculate this without making this also. I right. find it simpler. Yeah. Yeah. So, I can, I can calculate this mentally also and make a mancha chart by this yeah. method. If you will also practice, you will also get better. Yeah. yeah. So from the 10th sign, if we'll start counting the six places, there it goes. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. So Jupiter comes here. Yeah. Now Venus. Venus is in Scorpio sign in the second Navancha. Mm -hmm. Right? Yes. Yeah. We will start counting from where? Cancer sign? We will start counting from cancer sign, no? Yeah, yeah. So we, we yeah. count two places from right. cancer sign. So it comes to Leo. Uh -huh. Correct? Yes. Saturn is also in yes, Scorpio. Yeah. In which Namancha? Uh, second Namancha. No, third. Uh, third round, uh, yeah, right. right. So it Saturn is 8 degrees 6 minutes. Yeah. It is in the third Namancha. Oh. We count again from the cancer sign yeah. one two and three so saturn yes. comes here yeah. right yeah. now where is rahu so rahu is in aries 13 degree 46 uh -huh. minutes which means it is also here in the fifth navancha the fourth is ending at 13 degree 20 minutes yeah. but rahu is 13 degree 40 46 minutes right. so it is landing in the fifth navancha so we will count how many places from where we will count five places from the Aries sign itself. Okay. Mm -hmm. Correct? Mm -hmm. You're with me, right? Of course. Yeah, no, I'm with you now. Yeah. Where will we start counting? It is in the fire category. Yeah. yeah. The movable sign in the fire category is yeah. the Aries sign. Yeah. So I will count five from the Aries sign. Right. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah. So Rahu comes here. Yeah. 
And the thing with Rahu and Ketu is that they are always opposite to each other. Mm -hmm. So it will be here. Mm -hmm. Correct. Yes. Only could be there is uh, um, we made a mistake with uh, with Mars because in the in the software it says uh, Mars would be in the in the tenth house would be in the in the Gemini sign. So Mars uh, in the Virgo sign. Sorry. No 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 no. Mars is placed in Gemini sign. You told me. Uh huh. Wait. Um, no, I made a mistake. Mars in in uh, Virgo. Yeah. Yeah, so if Mars is in work, yeah. Yeah. then we count nine places from yeah. the tenth sign. Yeah. In two six mm. ten category, yeah. mm -hmm. we count the nine places from the tenth sign, which is this. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. So Mars mm. comes here. Right. Mm -hmm. So I, I I I probably I wrote Gemini, so I calculated it from Gemini. Yeah, of course, my, my, my no, no, that's okay. So, yeah. but you understood the rule. Yes, yes. And you see how the calculation works. Uh -huh. yeah. And we you cross verified it also. Yes. In the software. Yes. You can practice it on your own chart. Yes. Make manually first. Yeah. Your chart and then cross verify from the yeah. software. So you. Yes. Then you know that you can make the Namansha by yourself. Right. Even if somebody sends you the chart with the degrees, if you get the screenshot of somebody's chart with the degrees, you can still yeah. make the Namansha now. Yeah. 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 In case you don't have date of birth of a person, but you have a chart with degrees, you can make the Namansha. Right. So that is the reason I have taught you this. Otherwise, it is there in the software. Yeah. But I just want you to be. Capable enough of making at least the Navansha chart by yourself because this is an important chart. Right. In mm -hmm. Every planet that you see in the birth chart, mm -hmm. you have to see that planet in the Navansha chart. Yeah. So you know exactly how good or how bad it is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So Navansha chart is said to be the fortune or the bhagya of the planet or the yeah. or the ultimate result that yeah. although the planet looks like well placed yeah but if it falls in the namansha or the d9 chart then it would not probably give you as good a result as you are expecting it to give mm -hmm. but if there's a planet which is not in a good position in the birth chart but goes to a good sign yeah. in the namansha chart then still it has strength and it still can give you positive results but okay. or you can say that ultimately it will give you positive results. Okay. Yeah. Although it looks weak in the chart, but because it goes to a better sign in the in the D9 chart, mm. it is capable of giving you good results. Right. right. Yeah. So you've learned to make the Namancha chart. Yeah. Now we will come to the usage of the Namancha chart or how to use it but before that we talk about the divisional charts or how many divisional charts are there so there you know how many divisional charts are there 60 how many 60 six zero yes no it is or not more 60. more so it, it, some people make lot of uh, charts or can make many charts but uh, Parashara has given 16 charts. 16. Okay. 1-6, uh, which is called Shodashvarga. So, Shodash, 16 Varga charts. So, Shodashvarga. Mm -hmm. But then he gives import, uh, different kind of importances to these charts. So, when we say that you take a group of six divisional charts, that is called Shadvarga. You take a group of seven divisional charts, that is called Saptvarg. Then you take the group of 10 divisional charts. So out of 16, mm -hmm. it kind of tells you that there are to in total 16 divisional charts that Parasha Rishi gives. Then there are other classical works that give some other charts also, divisional charts. But we, mm -hmm. we generally use the uh, 16 charts that... So you 
you are going in detail yeah of the exact position of yeah. the planet and knowing the yeah. exact degree of the planet and yeah. predicting basis the degree of that planet right correct uh -huh. so that maximum weightage to the d60 chart because d60 chart is also seen for all areas of life yeah. okay. like the d1 chart okay yeah. so in the, in the shoda swarga or the 16 varga charts First is D1, of course, which is called the Rasi chart. Gets 3.5 mm. points. Second is Hora. Hora or D2. It is seen for wealth, mm. family, speech. Then mm. Hora gets one point. D3 is seen for siblings, happiness from siblings, your ability, power and courage. So mm. this is a detailed study of the third house. Right. D2 is the detailed study of the second house. So D3 is again given one point in 16 divisions. 16 divisions starts. D4, which is called Chaturthamsa, is given half a point. Half. Mm. 0.5. 0 .5 yeah. is the weightage. Chaturthamsa chart is seen for immovable property yeah. or assets. It is seen for home also. Yeah. It is seen then D7 chart. D7 chart stands for Saptamsha and has uh, and has been given half point weightage only. It is seen for progeny, happiness from children. Mm -hmm. Then D9 chart or Navansha chart. Navansha chart has been given three points. It is this is you can call this the supplementary chart of mm -hmm. the D1 chart because you see the quality of the planets in D9. Mm -hmm. And it is to be seen always. Your reading cannot get complete with, without looking at the D9 chart. It is the chart for spouse and married life and partners also. Then D10 chart is seen for profession, honor, success, promotion or demotion or overall status of a person. And it has been given half point. So my this thing of telling you all this is to let you know the importance so at least the main divisional charts should be seen but now there's a problem with small difference of time yeah bigger divisional charts yeah. change like if somebody tells you that he is born at 545 yeah. but he is let's say born at 547 yeah. with two minutes half a degree changes in the lagna you know right right so if no other chart change D60 would change. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Because it is so, so sensitive. Right. It, it is changing every two minutes. Right. Yeah. So, that, so there should be a, a birth so, and so, rectification or. Yeah. So, but then yeah. uh, there's so much to predict from the other charts that you can kind of avoid the bigger charts if you are not very sure of the time. Right. Mm -hmm. Because there, there are so many things to see from whatever is available from D1, D9, Moon Chart and the other prediction techniques that you don't get time to look at all the other things mm -hmm. with anyone you are doing the uh, readings. So then D12 chart, which is Dwada Shamsha chart, which is seen for parents. It is also seen for lineage and it also gets half a point. Then D16 is Shoda Shamsha. Shoda Shamsha gets two points. It is seen for movable assets and vehicles and movable assets and general happiness. So D4 is majorly seen for uh, fixed assets. Right. Like the property that you can make if you are willing to build a house. Right. Or if you want to check about your home in detail. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. That you can see from the D4 chart. Yeah. D16 is the movable assets. D20 is Vimshamsha chart. Vimshamsha chart D20 is seen for spiritual pursuits, results of worship. Yeah. It gets 0.5 weightage. Then D24, which is called Chatur Vimshamsha, it is given 0.5 weightage. This is seen for education, learning, academic achievements. How good will would you be in studies or in gaining knowledge? D27, Saptavim Shamsha, half a point. 
uh, and is seen for physical strength and weakness. Then D30, Rishamsha, it is seen for miseries, evil or arisht. Arisht means uh, the mishappenings that could happen. The Trishamsha chart is given one point weightage. And then a chart called D40. D40 is called Khavedamsha. It is seen for general auspicious effects. Mm -hmm. It is also given 0.5 weightage. Then there's D45. It is called Akshvedamsha is seen for character and conduct. It is also given 0.5 weightage. Then there is a chart called D60 chart, which is called Sh Shashti Amsha chart. And it is given 4 points weightage. Mm -hmm. And all effects, benefic or malefic can be seen. Or you can see it for all areas of life. Mm -hmm. For predicting different areas of life. So... These are different charts. Rules to make all charts are different. For every chart, there is a new rule. Okay. So okay. that is something that you will have to remember. Now, D9 is very, very important because one say one is that when we are reading the Dasha and especially when we are reading the Yantar Dasha, so yeah. Rashi Tulya Namanch is important. Yeah. So Rashi Tulya Namanch means that you check the sign of the planet in D9 chart, mm. put the finger on that sign in D1 chart. Mm. Like if a planet, let's say my in my chart, sun is in the Pisces sign in my mm. personal chart. Mm. Sun is in the Pisces sign. So I see it is the ninth lord of the chart. If that is the planet is in the Dasha period of or Antar Dasha period and it goes to uh, Scorpio sign in D9. Uh -huh. so I will because it goes to the Scorpio sign, either I make Rashi Tulya Namanch by rotating the chart and make it of the same Lagna yeah. or I just see the sign where it has gone in D9 like if I am talking about my son. So, so if my son and during the Antardasha of son, I will place a finger on wherever Scorpio sign is in my D1 chart. Mm -hmm. So in my D1 chart, it is in the 12th house. Mm -hmm. So I know that although sun is a good planet in my chart and it is placed in the 4th house, it is aspecting the 10th house. Mm -hmm. and so it has to give results among the two houses. So one where it is placed and one it is aspecting. Mm -hmm. And because it is the ninth lord, it is a good planet of the chart, although placed eight places from itself in the fourth house, activating the tenth house. And I yeah. told you when there is no planet in a house, the rule of axis, mm -hmm. and the planet that is uh, aspecting that house yeah. takes charge of or takes control of that house even more than or um, even more than the the house he is placed in. So, he kind of try and gives the best of the results of the house, seventh format, if there's no planet there. And because it has gone to the uh, eighth sign in the Namansha or Scorpio sign in the Namansha, which is falling in my twelfth house, which is showing obviously loss and changes. Yeah. Every time I have had or I can remember two dashas, two antar dashas of uh, sun. So, one is this that uh, went when I during the Mahadasha of Jupiter and mm -hmm. once I remember in the Mahadasha of Rahu. Okay. So when it when the Antardasha came, Sun's Antardasha in the Mahadasha of Rahu, then also I changed my job. Okay. Yeah. And it happened in a way that didn't, I didn't like it. Yeah. I was kind of I was I was not happy the way I left that job. But then in a week's time, I got a far better job. Okay. Which yes. kind of took me to places. It was right. a very, very mm -hmm. rewarding job. Uh -huh. so I just found very lucky and I kind of uh -huh. went to a lot of places uh, uh -huh. during that dasha uh, uh -huh. or, or not during that dasha, but during um, my tenure in that job. Uh -huh. So uh -huh. every three months, I was, I was given a trip to Based on the performance only, or it was kind of they were they were rewarding the performance in such a way that it was a very rewarding job. Okay. So every three months, I used to get either a foreign trip okay. or 
cash rewards or in kind. And then there was a competition that happened and I won it and I was given a car, mm -hmm. which is a rare thing for a job right. interview, yeah? okay. which is not a common thing mm -hmm. for somebody who is like a sales manager in a company who is winning a car as a reward or making foreign trips every three months. It is probably because of the destiny also that I, I was supposed to travel and go to places. Right. That is right. a different thing. But I'm just giving you a thing that although it wasn't some that something that happened, I didn't like it because I had to leave that job in kind of a, a not very comf comfortable scenario when situations are made yeah. such that you have no choice but to leave a job. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When the, the boss is so nagging or they, he's after your life in a way that right. he can make your life hell. So right. one day you are asked to shift to another city. So I moved yeah. to another yeah. city. And then he told me to move to another city. Yeah. And then I, 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 he kind of, and I knew that he is kind of purposely making my life hell. Right. So right. then uh, I was, uh, um, I was in this argument, and I ultimately had to give it up. And I told him that, yeah. okay, just keep your job, yeah. and I'm moving on. Yeah. So. But and for a couple of days, I was kind of distressed. I was very young, although I, there was nothing to be afraid of. I was married and I was kind of young. So that uh -huh. was the decision that I took that, okay, I don't want to do this job because uh -huh. he, he's kind of taking me for a ride. So, but uh, but then in a week's time only, uh -huh. job, which initially looked like an all right job, it gave me a decent hike, not a very big hike. But during that tenure, I, I kind of enjoyed a lot. I did a lot of hard work also, but uh, that hard work rewarded me also. And, right. and in the ways that I could possibly never imagine before joining there. But right. what I'm trying to tell you is that whenever the Antardasha of Sun came, mm -hmm. there was some change in the profession. Right. Mm -hmm. Even now when it came during the uh, Mahadasha of Jupiter, I was I was working for a multinational company and then that was also a good job. But what happened was that one in these last uh, how many four years or so after I gave that job gave up that job uh, four four and a four and a half years. What happened was that one I started my own work. Yeah. Uh, I was I was able to buy my house. I would. I, I had time to make my house, I, to get the interior work done, to get everything yeah. done. I, I had that time because I was working for myself and not working yeah. for anybody. And yeah. I mean, it wasn't a job. And here jobs are not 9 to 5. You go in the morning at 8.30 and come back by 8. So because of the traveling time, the commuting time. So you don't get yeah. time also in the... Then there, there's traveling also and this and that. Mm -hmm. they, uh, then I left that job, but that time I utilized for my Jyotish. Mm -hmm. I had enough time to study. I mm -hmm. I sit in my balcony at 7.30 in the morning till 11, 11.30 a.m. I, I, I spend that time with my books. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that is a good thing that yeah, it all went well, but it kind of started off with a lot of stress that when you give up a job without anything in hand. Mm -hmm. yeah, and I just gave it up thinking of that something would happen mm -hmm. and something, yes, it happened. And um, when I now, when I look back, I, I in hindsight, I can say it happened for the good. Mm -hmm. But in that mm -hmm. moment, the, the 15 days, I was in so much stress that I've 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 let the job go and uh, or given up the job and I don't have I don't know what to do. Yeah. But, yeah. So now you see that it is related to the fourth, related yeah. to the tenth that sun is expecting. Yeah. It is giving the result of the twelfth, the change. Yeah. Because it is the ninth lot, the change is for your goodness or to bring good things to you. Yeah. But yeah. We, because sun is a malefic planet, the way it does it, uh, the way it brings the changes are harsh. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is a cruel planet. Mm -hmm. it, is my, um, it is called mild malefic, but it is a cruel planet. 
Yeah. Its ways of dealing with you are harsh. Because right. a, a softer planet would probably give you a more lucrative offer and give you a situation where it is easier for you. And yeah. not very difficult emotionally or mentally. It is not very difficult. But Sun being a malefic planet wants to do good for you because it is the ninth lord of the chart. So, so the, the D9... Related to the fourth... Sorry. Yeah. So the, the sign in the D9 tells you about the, the, the purpose. Yeah. In whichever sign a planet is placed in the D9, uh -huh. you see that sign in D1. In D1, yes. And no yeah. matter where the planet is placed in D1, uh -huh. he would surely give you result of that house also. Right, right. Where the sign, which is the sign of the planet in D9 is falling in D1. So my in my chart, D, in D9 chart, sun is in the Scorpio sign. Right. So whenever right. there, and this is the rule for Antar Dasha. Uh -huh. The Rashi Tulya Namanch is the rule for Antar Dasha, not for Mahadasha. Yeah. yeah, you use Rashi Tulya Namanj yeah. and Dasha Lagna for Antar Dasha, for predicting the Antar Dasha. Right. This has nothing to do with Mahadasha. Right. We have ma discussed Mahadasha earlier. Right. And as I told you, that people would come to you suffering from Antar Dasha more. Yeah. 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 Not from Mahadasha so much. Yeah. Yeah. So, you understood the principle that yeah. how to use Rashi Tulya Namanj? Yes. Rashi Tulya Namanj means that you take the D9 chart, uh -huh. rotate it with respect to the Lagna yeah. in D1. Uh -huh. So, let the planets be where they are yeah. and just rotate the chart yeah. and bring the same sign in the Lagna as in D1. Uh -huh. Now, read the D9 chart. Yeah. So, and now see the planet whose Antar Dasha is running, where it is placed in the D9 chart. Yeah. So, like in your case, you are going through the Antar Dasha of which planet? Mercury. Mercury, Mercury. Yeah. Where it is placed in the D1? Uh, in the ninth house. Okay. Where it is placed in the D9 chart with sign? Um, in the, in the in Aries sign. Aries? Yes. Where is Aries falling in your D1 in the chart? In the 8th house. In the 8th house. In the 8th house. In, yeah. So, is it giving you results of the eighth house? Yeah. Is Jyotish, yeah. the subject yeah. of eighth house? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Is higher learning the matter of ninth house? Yes. Yeah. In, in gaining knowledge is the matter of first house? Yeah. Improving your personality is or gaining or becoming knowledgeable yeah. is the matter yeah. of first house? Yes. Yeah. Higher learning or scriptures, learning the scriptures is the matter of the ninth house? Yeah. And Jyotish is the matter of 8th house. So, because it is the Lagna Lord, mm. because it is the positive planet of your chart, mm. it has to give you the 8th house results. Mm. So, because it wants to do good to you, it is giving you the positive results of the 8th house. Mm. The best mm. positive results it was, it could think of or it could manage in the given right. circumstance. Right. Right. Otherwise, it could have taken you to the wrong side of life. It could have... Mm taken you towards indulgence mm. in substances mm. or have bad company mm. and waste your time in doing uh, unworthy stuff. Mm. Yeah, because mm. if, if you are doing positive utilization of the earth, it is a, it is a good thing, you know. Yeah. And it is by divine grace only that somebody is, is going through the period where earth house is activated. So whether he is using it positively or whether he is using it, using it negatively, it is by divine grace that it happens. Mm. So now you now you understand how you read Antar Dasha yeah. and how Rashi Tulya Namanch works. Yeah. 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 So, um, so what happens in the next Dasha? Strength of the divisional chart can be seen by the Lagna of that particular chart. How strong is the Lagna of that chart? Is you can say the indicator of how strong that area of life is mm -hmm. in your life. That area is how strong that area is in your life. So if Lagna of D9 is strong, that means it is promising marriage. So if there's a planet like Ketu sitting there, so it is not a planet of marriage. Ketu is kind of a planet of detachment. Right. But since you are aligning Ketu, mm -hmm. learning Jyotish, becoming yeah. spiritual, 
Yeah. It is aligned and it kinds of blesses you and allows you to have a relationship. Okay. Because it is kind of aligned by your practices. If you are doing sadhana, if you are doing meditation, if you are uh, you're living in isolation, you're living a selfless life. If that is happening and you're learning Jyotish also, uh -huh, uh -huh. using and or satisfying or it is kind of like we say uh, propitiation or propitiation of planets or or uh, kind of uh, settling the planets or making the planet satisfied or keeping him happy so yeah. you kind of or in simple word you can say that um, a planet is aligned when you kind of do the acts that are signified by that planet so right. because you are doing the ketu related things and aligning the planet it probably it can reward you with uh, uh, with a relationship or may help you settle down in right. life because you see whichever planet sits in the lagna of the divisional chart yes. he becomes the key planet for that area of life Right. If a planet is sitting in the lagna of the D10 chart, and if it is a good planet of your chart, uh -huh. if it sits in the D10 chart, lagna of the D10 chart, it will surely kind of stabilize your profession. If it is the planet in the D9 chart, it can give you marriage. 